there, what's up? It's Sierra, the festive bohemian, and on this channel, I share eco-friendly DIYs for your home and garden, thrift lips, botanical styling, and so much more. So if that sounds cool to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button because new videos are coming out every week. And this is part two to a multi-part series. And I'm super excited for this video uh, because I'm gonna show you how I decorate for fall. I'm gonna show you DIYs. Now, I want to approach this video a little differently um, as in, I want to really help you guys plan because I feel like one of the biggest things for me, and let me know if you could relate in the comments, is that I have this vision in my head, but then when I go to the store, I've got a two-year-old daughter, I've got all these other things going on, and I'm like, wait, what do I need? Does that match? And it becomes this, okay, well, I got to go back to the store, and so... I want to show you my strategy. So I'm going to break this into three steps, which are plan, shop, and create. Let's get into it, y'all. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Let's get into it. Let's go. Mm, 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 mm. Let's go root. Step one, let's plan. Take out that box of decorations in your garage, attic, wherever, lay it out, and see what you have. First things first, see what you're working with, right? So I have this gorgeous pattern that reminds me of pumpkins. I really loved the color. It was actually um, given away to me um, from a local interior designer, it was some scrap fabric. And I saw it and I was like, yes, I'm using this for fall. So it was really my inspiration behind my entire um, fall decorating this season. Um, but you can also take to Pinterest and pull up um, different color palettes, maybe go to Target or whatever that shop is that you always love their decorations for fall and see some examples, see the colors they're using um, and get inspired by that. Take some pictures and create a color palette um, for um, reference. So I've got my color palette. I've set aside the things that work with my color palette that's, you know, still look good. And then the other things that I just don't bring me joy. I just don't like the way they look. Kind of get an idea, okay, what could I paint? What color? One of my favorite things to do because it's just like, I feel like it's a hack to everything. It's just acrylic paint. Uh, you can paint most everything a different color. One thing to mention is that when painting metal or any smooth surface with acrylic paint, like glass as well, you'll want to prime first. But one of the things I do do, I'll throw this out is do do. Um, one of the things I do is I take a white primer paint and I'll brush over my metal if I want to maybe give it a, a faded look. Like for instance, the skeleton I had, it has very uh, bright eyes, a bright bow, and it just too much cartoony. I wanted to kind of vintage him out a little bit, but think about what you could paint, what you could paint, what color. I like to actually put this all in my notes on your phone. Uh, you can put your color palette, you can put your notes, you can take pictures. It is just a more easygoing process with a child. So there's that step. Two is shopping. Our favorite part, who doesn't like shopping? Um, so what I like to do is uh, hit the stores in a certain way. The first store, my go-to store, always the Goodwill, uh, because you never know what you're gonna find or what you're not gonna find. First, picture frames are great at the Goodwill because they're so inexpensive. I've got all these picture frames for like under a dollar. So these silvery, vintagey looking frames are, are perfect. Other things I look for at the Goodwill are any kind of glass containers. Glass is another thing that I feel like is just classic. They're see-through so you can fill them with something colorful to add color or you can fill them with lights to add light, or cookies if you're hungry. Um, 
there's lots of things that uh, you can do with, and plants, of course. <laughs> Uh, you can put plants in there as well, which is one of my favorite things to do, to make little terrariums. I love little, like, little trinkets that I can paint or little, um, just weird, like, little things that give character, I think, are, uh, really cool to find as well. Cake stands or platforms like this wood one, perfect for displaying food and creating levels. Mini terracotta pots or teacups are great year around and they're perfect for displaying little assorted plants and succulents. I just love the way they look. Glass bottles are the perfect multifunctional decor if you ask me. You can recycle your old bottles or find some unique bottles at the thrift store to display some dried flowers or uh, they also are perfect for propagating your plants. <laughs> Lastly, candle holders. Um, these I purchased a few years ago from the thrift store. Next stop is to find some pillows. So you can find links to these in the description. I also couldn't resist the softness of this blanket. Uh, this yellow pillow that says grateful will be perfect on my couch all fall long and these others honestly I'll keep on my on my couch all year long. Now I already had some of these metal signs that I dug out of my old Christmas decorations uh, that I believe I bought from Joann's a while back but I thought I could flip them around to use them as little magnet boards which then inspired me to grab a even bigger one and I plan to use this all year round but I found these awesome little clip magnets to go with it as well. Uh, I'll have that linked, I'll have these linked in the description for you um, if you'd like to check them out. And these images along with all the others uh, you see in my decor will be available for you to download for free on my site and you can find the link to the description uh, below as well. Last up, uh, candles. I picked up some candles. I found this one that says time. I'm loving blue this fall and I was stoked to find this candle which also happens to smell delicious. I also got this coffee smelling candle for the kitchen because who doesn't love the smell of coffee in the morning? Am I right? Step three, create. Here are five easy fall slash Halloween and DIY. Number one, succulent wall art. What you're gonna need is any wooden wall art, whatever you can glue moss to, you can glue a succulent to. You'll also need assorted moss, including, including sheet moss, hot glue, and as many succulents as you'd like. If your succulents are looking a bit lakey, like mine, uh, you can remove some of the bottom leaves, but save them for later, and cut the stem as close to the last leaf, last leaf as you possibly can, like so. Decide where you'd like to place your succulents. I like the idea of succulents coming out of the eyes, so I'm gonna use hot glue to secure the sheet moss directly to each eye. Cut off the excess. Here I have Graptobatellum, which are rosette forming succulents. They change color due to the amount of sun exposure they receive, so I really wanted to use them for their cool coloration. However, they can be hard to work with as the leaves tend to fall off quite easily. Individually glue them in to fill in any empty space along with your moss. I'm using mainly reindeer moss uh, here because it's easy to work with and I love the colors. Spanish moss also has a very fall feel and I love the texture it adds.
Now, your succulent wall art will last a couple months before you will need to propagate or replant them. They do best placed near a window in bright, indirect light. However, with clippings, you can get away with moderate light. Wait one to two weeks before watering and mist every five to 10 days, uh, depending on how dry or humid the air is in your home. Number two, no sew table runner and placemats. What you're gonna need is an iron. I have mine set on wool. You'll also need some fabric. I'm using that fabric I showed you earlier that I just love. Make sure to always wash your fabric first. And how much you'll need will depend on the size of your table, but make sure to add on an additional two inches at least. Lastly, you will need some fusible hem tape. First, lay out your fabric wrong side up, like so. Fold in the edges uh, lengthwise, about an inch or so. Place hem tape under the flap and iron. The trick here is to move slowly. Now, check the flaps to make sure they've been fully fused together. If you'd like to create circles, you can use a bowl and rotary cutter. Now our edges look pretty rough, but we can fix that with hem tape. Or we can create a fringe look by using our fingers or needle to unravel the ends. Or for a more lazy approach, uh, you can cut small slits in your fabric with scissors and further fringe it with your hands uh, and just pull, pull the little strings apart. Now it is important to test your fabric as um, some material will be easier to work with than others. Uh, fair warning, this can get messy. Number three is our Halloween tree. What you're gonna need is some reindeer moss, ornaments of your choice, and hot glue. I found this tree at the thrift store. It is actually a candle holder. Uh, I didn't do much here, honestly, than glue on some moss and attach these metal bats I removed from other old decorations. But you can really get creative with this and add fall ornaments. Originally, I thought about using this as a jewelry holder to hang like necklaces and put my rings on. But now I'm thinking of adding some succulents to it once my succulent babies are a bit more uh, mature but I would love to hear if you have any good ideas on what to do with it. Let me know in the comments and thank you uh, in advance for your suggestions. For now, however, I added some LED lights. I love these music syncing ones. Number four, beaded garland. What you'll need is some wooden beads, hemp twine, jute cord, acrylic paint and water, a threading needle, and hot glue. I love the look of a natural beaded garland, but it's fun to add some color for the holidays. You could mix acrylic paint with water to create a dye for your beads. Now, the vibrancy of your colors will depend on the paint to water ratio. So obviously the more water uh, you add, the more faded the color will be. Uh, you can add your beads directly to your paint mixture and coat them well. You can do several coats to darken the color if you'd like. Make sure to let them dry completely before stringing, or you may be disappointed to find uh, that their color will start to fade after the fact. Once you're happy with the length, tie each end in a knot, like so. You can make tassels by wrapping the jute cord around your hand, leaving the end string exposed. Now, 
take the end string and wrap it around to kind of hold everything together. Secure it to the end of your beaded garland, like so. Now finish your tassel off by wrapping it with a short piece of the jute. Last but not least, number five, Pider Web Dream Catcher. What you're gonna need is a wire hanger or two, some mini pumpkins. I painted these ones gray to resemble concrete. You also need some assorted foliage and flowers, jute cord and air plants and moss, as well as hot glue. First, you want to unravel your hangers. I started with one and then decided to add another one later to make it a bit thicker, um, but it's likely easier to start with two. Bend your hangers into as much of a circle as you possibly can and secure the ends together with your jute cord. Now, take your jute cord and wrap it around the entire hanger. I found it easier to work with smaller pieces, securing them with hot glue um, at the ends as I go. Now we've wrapped our entire circle, but before gluing anything else, I like to arrange how I'd like it to look. And I wanna make sure to cover up any abnormal looking spots. Uh, I know I've got a lot going on here. I have a black glittery garland. I have some leaves from my baby shower a couple years ago, which I painted some of them gold. And I have some fake flowers I removed from a pumpkin that I transformed this year into a succulent planner. Uh, I'll include a card for you um, if you'd like to go check those out. So I'm just going to play around with everything here and see what I come up with. Now after you've got it looking like you want it, secure everything with hot glue. First, I glued my pumpkins and then I used some leaves to create a backing for the moss. Just secure the moss to the leaves and the leaves to the hanger. To care for your air plants, you'll want to mist them three to seven times a week, depending on how dry uh, the air in your home is. Hang it in a window or a spot that will receive bright, indirect light. Lastly, add some spider webs and spiders. All right guys, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with this fall. Um, I'd love to see it, so tag me at, uh, at Festive Bohemian on my Instagram. Um, if you liked this video and you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button um, because I'm going to be coming out with new videos every week um, and there's some more fall and Halloween videos to come. Uh, so yeah, and you can hit that little bell thing down below if you would like to be notified when that next one does come out. Thank you guys so much for um, watching and...